G'day everyone, welcome to Life on the Hulls. It's, uh, it's, it's a big storm brewing up over me right now and uh, I'm praying that I don't get struck by lightning because there's some pretty serious lightning going on. This week, I'm gonna be installing, finally, my engine modules. Now, that has been a long, long haul. There's been a lot of modifications and a lot of chops and changes along the way to suit my brand new state-of-the-art Yanmar 57 horsepower common rail diesels. Now, there's been a lot of chopping and changing, so that's what this video is gonna go into. I'm gonna get them installed and give you a little bit of relief and certainly give me some, that's for sure. This weekend, haha, -ha, looks like I'm demolding. Look at that, I put in another brace down in there. I'm paranoid, I've got braces upon braces upon braces down in the engine room down here. Quick look, oh yes, look, look. Oh, there's another brace there. We don't wanna show you too much before you get through the video. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Don't forget the composite shop. In two weeks, the last episode goes up and then you can watch the whole series at all of the 11 videos right through till the end for, uh, for the kayak build series. Thanks for joining me and let's get into it. So now I've got the flanges all cut off these engine modules. It's time now to fit a, uh, a retrofit around the area that I've actually butchered. Now that's gonna take a little bit of work. I'm gonna use composite angle. I've actually used it already on the face of the, uh, of the module, but I now need to work out the filler part that's gonna create that form that I can then laminate around on. So as you can see, the butchering of these modules has been important so that I can actually move this bearer that was once out here for the larger engine, five centimeters to the center on both sides here but it's left me with a mess. And how I'm gonna circumvent that mess is with this composite angle, which I glued on yesterday. And now what I have to do is work out another piece to actually fit here. So you can see here, I have to trim it there to that shape and then add another piece angling that way over the top of this one, which will give me a, a nice round form with which to then laminate and tie it back into this module. So I'm gonna do a repair a complete cosmetic repair on all of these sections here, on all four, on the four section and on the stern there, and uh, and basically build this up to the point that it actually looks like it, uh, it was never chopped up. Well, I hope so anyway. It probably look, never looked perfect, but it's gonna look a damn sight better. You can see I've drawn a line there, and I'll get my multi-tool and trim off that fin. And then I'll add another piece underneath this flap here, which then gets glued to the foam bolster, which will wrap around. Right, so I've just screwed this first one and I've got epoxy on the inside of this one here so that's gluing to the one here and I've got epoxy on the outside of that one so it's actually gluing to the module flap there. I've put a couple of screws in there it's going to hold that for the night but you'll notice I've got a plastic bag here uh, down all the way underneath there just in case there's any oozing of epoxy. I do not want this module locked in place. I've got that one glued there. I'm just going to whack a couple of screws in it now and that'll get that one finished and pretty much that now gives me the basis of the ability to be able to repair all the way around and into here. And then I'll be able to flow coat that or gel coat it or flow coat it and then polish it back and make it look like it hopefully never happened. So part and parcel of fiberglass, you can pretty much repair anything provided you're prepared to put in the extra work. And uh, there's a lot of other work I can do there. I'm looking at that. I can actually fill in that gap at the top there now, which is uh, gonna be good once that module's in place. So that's a pretty effective repair there. And uh, it all just takes a bit of backing. You've just got to be able to back the, the whole unit so you can uh, do some restorative work later on. Up here, this part here is going to be glued to the engine by a bolster. And then this here will be laminated down to the, uh, to the bearer itself. So thereby sort of tying the whole thing in and making a much nicer 
uh, appearance. Now you'll see at the other end there how this is still loose. And what I did is I glued this part to the flap and I've glued an edge there to the actual module. That's so I can still slide the module in and out. So I've still got a bit of work to do underneath to tie the whole thing in and make it all, um, you know, pretty much integrated and, and almost one piece. But yeah, lots to do. I'm gonna basically remove these screws now and get this thing in place. I'm wedged up here in my shaft uh, skeg. So we'll get this part done. Excuse the camera rocking away. And uh, this is all the, uh, the finer detail that's going to take some time, but by the same token, we'll improve the, uh, the appearance. Even though it is going to be underneath an engine, it will always be as rough as guts to me if I just leave it like that. Now, a lot of boat builders would uh, not tolerate it, and I'm certainly not going to either. So now I've done all of that restorative work around the areas that I've broken out, I've got to get the modules out and start glassing. I can only do the stern faced ones, I have to actually do the other ones in place because they're going to be locked into those bolsters. But it's been a bit of heavy lifting and getting them out of my own is no mean feat. I'm telling you, I've had to basically lift everything out with straps, uh, been jammed in amongst them as I'm trying to get them out because they are a perfect fit. But I'll get this one out, I'm going to start working on both of them concurrently, make sure that I tidy up the top parts and then I can put them back in, start to complete my engine room. Very excited. Just gonna show you where I'm at. So what I need, need to do is I need to fill it this area here and I'm gonna basically glass this back together and on the other side and similarly over here, glass these ones into place so that I've got a solid bed with which to then start some repairing of the gel coat. Now the ones down the bottom down here they need to remain flexible because that actually is going to glue to the bolster so i can't do that one that one has to be done in place in the module once the engine bay is all flow coated out and ready to go i can then get in and finish the bottom ones so i've got these laminated up yesterday and they're perfect so pretty happy with uh with how that's come up, that's as solid as rock now. It's basically fully structural. Um, all I need to do now is give it a light sand and get it all fed and then basically put some flow coat on it and then polish it back. It's gonna be a bit of mucking around, but the result will be worth it because remember I butchered this, now it's fully structural. This needs to be cleaned up, whitened up, polished back, job done. Okay, so first coat of flow coat, I've just brushed that on. I'm gonna let that set. In fact, I think it's already set up yet. Yeah, it's still a little bit tacky. It's got a, a waxed coating on it. Now, for me to put another layer on here, I have to actually sand it back to, uh, to remove the wax coating and then give it a wipe with some acetone and then do another layer. I've done this one too, starting to get back to how it was supposed to be. Same deal over here. I didn't actually show you, but I'll brush this on. If I was really meticulous, what I'd do is I'd mask it, plastic back the whole lot and then spray it. But Jesus, for the amount of work, it's not worth spraying for the amount of setup time for this particular part. But as you can see, I've been able to return that to almost back to how it was. It just takes a little bit of fiddling, not a lot of work, a little bit of sanding and, uh, and it's done. So I'll be working on those ones down there actually down in the engine room when I mount these modules. So that'll be a bit of a, a, a retrospective fit once it's down in there because I can't close up these ones because this needs to go outside of the bearer itself. And uh, if I do it up now, it won't fit back in. So I've got to leave that one loose. These ones can be done now. That's a bit less time spent head down in the engine room.
I'm getting to the end of the reinforcement in these engine rooms. I've got four more layers to put in, two on each side here where these foam core sections were removed all that way back when, when I decided that these modules weren't going to fit with the foam. Um, they've had many, many, many layers put in there. I'm going to put two more layers in there just to give that beef up that section there because that is a quite a strong section already, but very important that I get those layers on there before I uh, knuckle these, um, these modules in and get them glued in. Hopefully this week I'll have them in and I can move forward with the rest of the project and I'm out of the build until I two more layers, one here and one over here, two layers on each side, and then I'll peel apply it and then pretty much give it a nice sand, it's all ready to go. Okay, that only took about half an hour. I've been putting that off for ages and it really didn't take that long. So this here now would be uh, two layers of 300 CSM on the gel coat, layer of 1200, layer of 300, layer of 1200, layer of 300, layer of 1200, layer of 300, two more layers of 600 double bias on both sides. So that's the engine room spec here. And uh, you know, essentially that was what we constructed from the survey report that actually ensured that we didn't have the foam in here. So there's, there's a bit of a method to the madness here, just making sure that all my bases are covered prior to putting in this module here. You can see here that the dead wood, or what I'm gonna call from now on the dead glass, is now rock solid. And, uh, and it is now ready for the shaft tube to be put through. Once the module's in place, I'm gonna be able to drill in from the outside back through and, uh, and then determine the second one on the module bulkhead, which is here. That shaft log will be carried by both of those dead glasses and, uh, and then into the module itself for the PSS seal and the shaft that's gonna go through here. Right, so I'm starting to think about the through holes on my engine modules here. I've actually got two here. I've got one here and one over here. Now, if I think about that, if I glue this module down to the hull and I have a pinhole underneath that through hole and that through hole is mounted to the module itself one pinhole could sink the whole boat so what i've actually done i've glued some pucks directly under these modules and actually physically glued them down to the hull so that there's no chance that they're ever going to leak and they're directly underneath these ones here and what i then need to do is i then need to cut out the exact size hull there and then fair it back in. I'm not prepared to glue this module down and have the hull underneath it and have the chance of a leak because any sort of pressure, particularly with the weight of the boat, will jet the water in and ultimately that could sink a boat. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm gonna drill these out like this with my hull saw so that they mate with the one that's actually down on the hull. And very important that I've done that because then I'll have a perfect flat surface that I know is sealed to the hull and not in between the module and the hull. That could be a disaster. And I'm really keen to do this correctly. So I've glued a six millimeter puck to the actual hull at the back of the engine room. Big day has come. It's been a bit of a battle. I tell you, I feel like I've been working down in here for months, but that there is about to get its module glued in. Pretty happy about that. Excuse the selfie stick, guys. I'm trying to be young again. But uh, down here, I've got a lot of areas I need to glue. So I've got about 1.2 kilos of, uh, of Techniclue there, that's R60, so it's a structural adhesive. It's actually gonna hold these modules in place. I've got a lot of areas along here that I need to, uh, need to adhere to. And also here on the module here, you can actually see I've made some black marks all the way down here. Wherever I need to adhere it, I need to make sure that I'm getting that surface because it's only gonna go down once. I've not got any other chance of getting uh, in underneath it once it's in. I've planned it, I've drawn it out, I've walked it through my mind. It's now time to do it. Here we go. Time to mix up. It's, uh, 
It's gotta be a big one. This is probably more glue than I've used in any other modules because there's no way I can get under it, around it. Whereas all the other ones I have access, this one I just don't have any access other than in the dead glass at the end. So I've got to make sure that I get enough material down to glue it without adding unnecessary weight. And certainly uh, after watching a lot of the channels where they're repairing uh, boats where the grids have been just bogged in with polyester bog and all the like, you know, I just want to make sure this is right and use as minimal amount of this as possible and pre preferably tabbing rather than glue. All right, let's get this camera on too. All right, here we go. So I'm going to start on the sides. I don't want to be walking around down in there. You've cleaned all that. But I'm thinking I'll just start with a... I'm going to use a lot, I think. Yes, yeah, well... So we're going to do the bulkhead all the way down. So we're going to get glue on the bulkhead and then I'm going to tab the bulkhead later on. Let's deal with that. Brilliant. We've got our renter crowd here. Daisy, <laughs> Good. Johnsy, the module's going in. This is the end of my life in my port build. I said it, didn't I? You did. The end of my life. This is the last module to go in. This is where the bodies go. This is where the bodies are going. We're, we're, we're going to be sticking in plastic bags in there. Now we're going to help John get that freaking thing down without getting shit all over us. Yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, right now. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I can step here and here. Slide him over me. Okay, I'll right. set it up on this bar there, guys. Yep. Right. When you get a chance, John, get your strap organized and make sure it's clear. Okay. All right. Okay, here we go. All right, let's do it nice and slow, John. Nice and slow. I can't put any more down, can I? No. This is it. Here we go. You ready? Four. That's it. Right. Oh. Right, Dave, can you pass me those bits of wood, mate? There. there. Holy shit, that is down. Go on. Yeah. Thank you. Probably. Way too much glue. That's better than not enough. That's alright. We can move it somewhere else. We use this somewhere else. We don't need it there. Oh yeah, we just lightly, can't we? This is all going to be glassed and tabbed in here too. Of course. So. You know, as you're walking on it, it's flexing. Yeah, we'll move. Um, oh. Mate, that is amazing. I think maybe you should put some weight on it. Oh, I'm going to, yeah. Hang on. I've got to pull that tape out. Good lad, Dave. Oh, that's a pretty good piece of eye beam. Legend. Yeah. You gotta remember, it's actually engaged into a bulkhead here, which I'm gonna then glass, once this hatch is open, I'm gonna glass that all in, and I'm gonna glass all the way along the top. Oh, it's so. massively strong. Yeah, oh yeah, it's definitely it's strong. Nice fit too. Yeah, you are right. Oh, look at that. The other thing I've got on the boat is some lead ballast weights. 
Oh, there we go. Which are 10 kilos each. And they're really nice to use. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Surely that's... So the help's raced up in a lunch break to chuck in a module. How good's that? Convenient. <laughs> Convenient to have some help. Uh, no one's around here at the moment, so we're all pretty busy. Everyone's busy. Joel, he's busy and the boys are busy. And John, don't know where, he's always hard to find when I'm desperately getting epoxy out. So I've got a lot of epoxy down there. It's all ready to go. Pretty much fits perfectly. I've ascertained that that's where it needs to go. And uh, we're going to drop it in, aren't we? Yeah. Awesome, let's do it. Sit on Alright, sit it there and now I'm just going to leave it there. Just leave it there. No, it's on there. Leave it there. Sit there. Chuck your strap over the top. That's it. Just stop cutting my work. No, 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 I understand. Hang on. Shit. Now, we've got these strapped. Right, don't sit it down yet. Try to keep it up. Right, try to get it centered. Right now, as it goes down, we want to go in in one hit. See that little edge? Sit it down in that hole there. I can't see it. No. Down this hole over on the left hand side, over this side. No, I can't see. I don't know what you're looking at. I'm not Look wrong. down the hole. What hole? The hole in front of you. Yeah. I've just got a lot of bracing stuff to do here. Oh, that's awesome. That's in. <laughs> yeah, my time in the build. I can't go any lower than there now. That's fantastic. Better than yesterday, I ended up walking in the 